we now have the tools, I think, to understand the idea of a linear subspace of Rn. Let me write that down. And I'll just write it, just, I'll just always call it a subspace of Rn. Everything we're doing is linear. Subspace, subspace of Rn. I'm going to make a definition here. I'm going to say that a set of vectors v, so v is some subset of vectors, subset, some subset of Rn. Rn. So we already said Rn. When we think about it, it's really just a a really an infinitely large set of vectors where each of those vectors have n components. So you know we I'm going to not formally define it, but this is just a set of vectors. I mean sometimes we visualize it as multi-dimensional space and all of that, but if we wanted to be just as abstract about it as possible, it's just all the set. It's the set of all of the you know we could call it x1 x2 all the way to xn where each of these where each of the xi's are a member of the real numbers for i is for all of the i's right that was our definition of rn it's just a huge set of vectors an infinitely large set of vectors v I'm calling that I'm going to call that a subset of Rn, which means it's just some, you know, it, it's it it could be all of these vectors, and I'll talk about it in a second, or it could be some subset of these vectors. Maybe it's all of them, but one particular vector. And in order for this v to be a subset, to be a subspace, so I'm already saying it's a it's a subset of Rn. So if I were to, you know, maybe this will help you. If I draw all of Rn here as this big blob, so these are all of the vectors that are in Rn. V is some subset of it. It could be all of Rn. I'll show that in a second. But let's just call it, let's just say this is V. V is a subset of vectors. It is a subset of vectors. Now in order for V to be a subspace, and this is a definition, in order if V is a sub V is a subspace or linear subspace of Rn of Rn this means this is my definition this means three things this means that v contains the zero vector v contains i'll do it really that's the zero vector or you could almost you could you know this is equal to zero all the way and you have n zeros so v contains the zero vector and this is a big v right there if we have some vector x in v so let me write this so it's x if my vector x is in v is in is you know if x is one of these vectors that's included in my v then when i multiply x times any member of the reals so if x is in v then if v is a subspace of rn then x times any scalar x times any scalar is also in v this has to be the case and for those of you who are familiar with the term, this, this term is called closure. If I have any element of a set, and then I, this is closure under multiplication. Let me write that down into a new color. This is closure, closure under scalar multiplication. Scalar multiplication. And that's just a fancy way of saying, look, if I take uh, some member of my set, if I take some member of my set and I multiply it by some scalar, and I multiply it by some scalar, I'm still going to be in my set. If I multiply it by some scalar and I end up outside of my set, if I ended up in some with some other vector that's not included in my subset, then this wouldn't be a subspace. In order for it to be a subspace for any if I multiply any vector in my sub in my subset by a real Scalar. I'm defining the subspace over real numbers. If I multiply it by any real number, I should also get another member of this subset. So this is one of the requirements. And then the other requirement is if I take, if I take two vectors in my, let's say I have vector a, it's in here, and I have vector b in here. So if if a, so this is my other requirement for v being a subspace. If a is in a, sorry, if a if vector a is in my set v and vector b is in my set v then if v is a subspace of rn that tells me that a a and b must be in v as well so this is closure 
under addition. Let me write that down. Closure, closure, under addition. Once again, just a very fancy way of saying, look, if, I, if you give me two elements that's in my subset, and if I add them to each other, and these could be any two arbitrary elements in my subset, and I add them to each other, I'm going to get another element in my subset. That's what closure under addition means, that when you add two vectors in your set, you still end up with another vector in your set. You don't somehow end up with a vector that's outside of your set. So if, you, if, you, if I have a subset of Rn, so some subset of vectors of Rn that contains the 0 vector, contains a zero vector and it's closed under multiplication and addition then I have a subspace so subspace implies all of these things and all of these things imply a subspace this is the definition of a subspace now this might seem all abstract to you right now so let's do a couple of examples and I don't know if this can examples will make it any more concrete but I think if we do it enough you'll kind of get the intuitive sense of what a space implies I mean, well, I'll, let me just do some examples because I want to stay relatively mathematically formal. So let's just say I have the the almost trivially basic set. Let's let's say my set of vectors. I only have one vector in it, and I have the zero vector. So I'll just do a really bold zero there, or I could write it like this: the only vector in my set is the zero vector. And let's say we're talking about R3. So let's say my zero vector in R3 looks like that. So what I want to know is, is my set V, is V a subspace subspace of R3? Well, in order for it to be a subspace, three conditions. It has to contain the 0 vector. Well, the only thing it does contain is the 0 vector. So it definitely contains the 0 vector. So 0 vector, check. Now, is it closed under multiplication? So that means if I take any member of the set, there's only one of them, and I multiply it by any scalar, I should get another member of the set, or I should get maybe itself. So if, let's see, there's only one member of the set. So the one member of set of the set is the zero vector. If I multiply it times any scalar, what am I going to get? I'm going to get c times c times zero, which is zero, c times zero, which is zero, and c times zero. So it's going to I'm going to get the its only member, but it is closed. So it is closed under multiplication under multiplication you can multiply this one vector times any scalar and you're just going to get this vector again so you're going to end up being in your 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 zero vector set you're going to so you that's a check now is it closed under addition well clearly if i add any member of this set to itself or i mean there's only one member or to another member of the set there's only one option here if i just add that to that what do i get i just get that I just get it again. So it definitely is closed closed under addition. Addition. Check. So it does turn out that this trivially basic subset of R3 that just contains the zero vector, it is a subspace. It is a subspace. Maybe a trivially simple subspace but it satisfies our constraints of a subspace. You can't do anything with the vectors in it that will somehow get you out of that subspace, or at least if you're dealing with scalar multiplication or addition. Now let me do one that maybe maybe the idea will be a little clearer if I show you an example of something that is not a subspace. So let me get my coordinate axes over here. So let's say I were to find some subspace, let me some subset. I don't know whether it's a subspace. Let me call my set s and it equals it equals all the vectors it equals all the vectors yeah, let me say x1 x2 that are a member of r2 such that i'm going to make a little constraint here such that x1 x1 is greater than or equal to 0 so it contains all of the vectors in R in R2 that ha that are at least zero or greater for the first term. So if we were to graph that here, what do you get? We can get anything. We can move up or down in any direction, right? So all we can go up and down in any direction, but we're constraining ourselves. These are all going to be zero or greater. So all of these first coordinates are going to be zero or greater. So we're going to and this one we can go up and down arbitrarily. So we're essentially 
this sub this subset of R2, R2 is my entire Cartesian plane. But this subset of R2 would include the vertical axis, often referred to as the y-axis. It would include the vertical axis, and essentially the first and fourth quadrants. If you remember your quadrant labeling, so that's the first quadrant, and that's the fourth quadrant. So my question to you is, is S is S a subspace, subspace of R2? So the first question, does it contain the zero vector? So in the case of R2, does it contain does it contain 0, 0? Well, sure. It includes 0, 0 is right there. We included, we said x is greater than or equal to 0. So this could be 0. And obviously, there's no constraint on this. So definitely, the 0, 0 vector is definitely contained in our set s. So that that is a check. Now, let's try another one. If I add any two vectors in the set, is that going to be a third, is that also going to show up in our set? Well, let me just do a couple of examples. Maybe this isn't a proof. Let's see, if I add that vector to that vector, what am I going to get? If I put this up here, I'm going to get that vector. If I add that vector to that vector, what am I going to get? I could put this one has tail, I would get a vector that looks like, I would get a vector that looks like that. And if I did it any, if I did it formally, if I add, let's say that I have two vectors that are a member of our set. So let's say the first one is a, b, and I add it to c, d. What do I get? I get a plus c over, oh, this was a d, over b plus d. So this thing is going to be greater than 0. This thing is also going to be greater than 0. That was my requirement for being in the set. So if both of these are greater than 0 and we add them to each other, this thing is also going to be greater than 0. And we don't care what these. These can be anything. I didn't put any constraints on the, on the, second, on the second component of my vector. So it does seem like it is closed under addition. Closed under addition. Now what about scalar multiplication? Let's take a particular case here. Let me just, well, let's just take, let's say, let's take my AB again. I have my vector AB. Now, I can pick any real scalar. Remember, it doesn't, you know, so any real scalar, what if I just multiply it by minus 1? So minus 1. So if I multiply it by minus 1, I get minus A minus B. So if I were to draw it visually, if this is, you know, let's say AB was the vector 2, 4, so it's like this. When I multiply it by minus 1, what do I get? I get minus A, minus A, minus B. I get this vector, which you can vi clear, visually clearly see falls out of, if we view these as kind of position vectors, it falls out of our subspace. Or if you just view it not even visually, if you just do it mathematically, clearly if this is positive, then this is going to, and let's say that we assume this is positive and definitely not 0. So it's definitely a positive number. So this is definitely going to be a negative number. So when we multiply it by negative 1, for, for really any element of this that doesn't have a 0 there, you're going to end up with something that falls out of it. right? This is not a member of this set. Because to be a member of the set, your first component had to be greater than 0. This first component is less than 0. So this subset that I drew out here, the subset of R2 is not a subspace because it's not closed under multiplication or scalar multiplication. Not closed under scalar multiplication. Not closed. So this is not not a subspace, not a subspace of R2. Now, I'll ask you one interesting question. What if I ask you just the span of some some set of vectors? Is that a valid? Let's say I have the span of some, let's say I want to know the span of, of yeah, I don't know, let's say I have vector v1, v2, and v3. And I'll be, you know, I'm not even going to tell you how many elements each of these vectors have. Is this a valid subspace? Valid subspace of Rn, where you know n is kind of the number of elements that each of these have, of Rn. Well, let's pick 
Ed, let's pick one of the elements of let, let me define let me let me just call let me just call u to be the set uh, or is, is set, the set of all linear combinations of this is the span. So let me just define u to be the span. So I want to know is u a valid subspace? So let's think about it this way. Let me just pick out a random element of u. Let me pick out a random element of u. Actually, let me let me does this contain the zero vector? Well, sure. If we just multiply all of these times zero, that is a so if we just say zero times v1 plus zero times v2, these are all vectors. I didn't write them bold. Plus zero times v3, we get the zero vector, right? We just, everything just is zeroed out. So it definitely contains the zeroed vector. This is a linear combination of those three vectors. So it's included in the span. Now, what if I let's just let me just pick some arbitrary. Uh, member of, of, of this span. So in order to be a member of this set, it just means that you can be represented. Let me just call the vector x. It means that you can be represented as a linear combination of these vectors. So you know some combination c1 times v1 plus c2 times v2 plus c3 times v3. Right? I'm just representing this vector x. It's a member of this, so it can be represented as a linear combination of those three vectors. Now is this set closed under multiplication? Well, let's just multiply this times some arbitrary constant. What is c times x? Let me scroll down a little bit. What does c times x equal? Let me do a different constant, actually. Let me multiply it times some arbitrary constant a. What is a times x? Well, it's a times c1 times v1. I'm just multiplying both sides of this equation times a. a times c2 times v2 plus a times c3 v3, right? Well, you could just, I mean, if this was an arbitrary constant, this you could just write this as another arbitrary constant. This is another arbitrary constant. And this is another arbitrary constant. And I want to be clear, all I did is I just multiplied both sides of this equation times a scalar. But clearly, this expression right here, I mean, I could write this, I could rewrite this as you know c4 times v1 plus c5 times v2, where this is c5, this is c4 plus c6 times v3. This is clearly another linear combination of these three vectors. So the span is the set of all of the linear combinations of these three vectors. So clearly, this is one of the linear combinations. So it's also included in the span. So this is also in u. It's also in the span of those three vectors. So it is closed, closed under multiplication, under multiplication. Now we just have to show that's closed under addition, and then we know that the span of and we I did three here, but you can extend it to an arbitrary n number of vectors. That the span of any set of vectors is a valid subspace. So let me prove that. So we already defined one x here. Let me define another vector that's in u or that's in the span of these vectors, and it equals I don't know. Let's say it equals d1 times v1 plus d2 times v2 plus d3 times v3. Now what is what is x plus y? If I add these two vectors, what are they equal to? Well, I could just add it, it x plus y means all of this stuff plus all of this stuff. And so what does that equal? It means if you just add these together, you get c1 plus d1 times v v1 plus c2 plus d2 times v2 plus c3 plus d3 times v3, right? I just, you know, you had a v3 here, you had a v3 there, you just add up their coefficients. Clearly, this is just another linear combination. These are just constants again. That's an arbitrary constant, that's an arbitrary constant, that's an arbitrary constant. So this thing is just a linear combination of v1, v2, and v3. So it must be, by definition, in the span of v1, v2, and v3. So we are definitely closed, closed under, under addition. Now you might say, hey Sal, you're saying that the span of any vector is 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 a valid subspace, but let me let me show you an example that, you know, clearly, if I just took the span of one vector, let me just say let me just define u to be equal to the span of just the vector. Let me just do a really simple one. Let's say it's just the vector 1, 1. 
clearly this can't be a, a valid subspace. Let's think about this visually. So what does vector 1, 1 look like? Vector 1, 1 looks like this. right? And the span of vector 1, 1 is all of, and this is in its standard position, the span of vector 1, 1 is all of the linear combinations of this vector. Well, there's nothing else to add it to, so it's really just going to be all of the scaled up and scaled down versions of this. So if you scale it up, you get, you get things that look that look more like that. If you scale it down, you get things that look more like that. If you go into the negative domain. So with just by multiplying this vector times different values, and if you were to grab, put them all into a standard position, you would essentially get a line that looks like that. And you say, gee, you know, that doesn't look like a whole subspace, but a couple of things. Clearly, it contains the vector 0. It contains the 0 vector. We can just multiply 0 times 1. We can just scale it by 0. Right, the span is just all of the different scales of this, and if there were other vectors, you would add it to those as well. But this is clearly going to be the zero vector, so it contains the zero vector. Is it is it closed under multiplication? Well, the span is the set of all of all of the vectors, where if you take all of the real numbers for c and you multiply it times one one, that is the span. So clearly, you multiply this times anything, it's going to equal another thing that's definitely in your span. Now the last thing, is it closed under addition? Is it closed under addition? So any two vectors in the span could, let's say that I have one vector a that's in my span. I can represent it as c1, some scalar times my vector there. And then I have another vector, b, and I could represent it as c2 times my one vector in my set right there. And so what is this going to be equal to? This is going to be equal to, this is essentially going to be equal to c, well, let me get a little more space. This is going to be equal to c1 plus c2 times my vector. right? This is almost trivially obvious. But clearly, this is in the span. It's just a scaled up version of this. This is in the span. It's in a scaled up version of this. And this is also going to be in the span of this vector, because it's just a. this is just another scalar. We could call that c3. And if you just do it visually, you know, if I take this vector right there, let's say I take that vector, and I were to add it to, and I were to add it to this vector, if you put them head to tails, you would end up with, you would end up with this vector right there in green. I don't know if you can see it. Maybe I'll do it in, maybe I'll do it in red right there. You end up in, you will end up with that vector. And you could do that. Any vector plus any other vector on this line is going to equal another vector on this line. Any vector on this line multiplied by some scalar is just going to be another vector on this line. So you're closed under you're closed under multiplication, you're closed under addition, and you include and you include the zero vector. So even this trivially simple span was uh, is a valid subspace. And that just backs up the idea that we showed here. That in general, I mean, I could have just made this a set of n vectors. Right? I picked three vectors right here, but it could have been n vectors, and I could have used the same argument that the span of n vectors is a valid subspace of Rn. And I showed it right.